Deep in the ocean lies a graveyard of satellites and rockets that were sent hurtling back to Earth. Where exactly is this remote place that holds the history of space exploration? Scott Sutherland answers all of your questions about this space graveyard. The space graveyard is uh, an uninhabited region of the South Pacific Ocean, uh, centered on a point called Point Nemo, uh, which is the farthest, most remote place on Earth uh, from any other islands or uh, human habitation. Uh, well, uh, for most uh, space debris that enters Earth's atmosphere, it just burns up. It's small, it's not very durable. But there are larger objects, defunct satellites, uh, spacecrafts that have ended their mission, uh, that uh, have much more durable materials included in them, and we don't want those falling on anybody or anybody's property. Basically, since the stuff has to come down at some point, we chose, or NASA and other space agencies chose uh, the most remote place on Earth to, uh, to have these fall. That region is so large that it can easily contain uh, the long uh, fallout zones that these burn ups take because they, they don't all happen in one spot. They're dragged out over a large area. Since 1971, uh, when the uh, space cemetery or the space graveyard was established, um, there's been around 300 different spacecraft that have ended up splashing down there. Um, some of the more well-known ones are uh, Russia's Mir st space station, uh, as well as six other of their uh, Salyut space stations. Uh, there's uh, numerous satellites, and um, anytime a cargo vessel leaves the International Space Station, except the Dragon uh, cargo ships, which are, are designed to survive re-entry, um, those craft are always said to burn up over the South Pacific Ocean, and that's exactly where they go into the space cemetery. Yeah, it takes a lot of math uh, for these to end up in the right spot. Basically, uh, as long as they have control over the spacecraft before re-entry, they can uh, very carefully time exactly where it, it, it drops to the point where the atmosphere will, will drag on it sufficiently to pull it down just by timing it precisely, they can aim it for that specific spot in the, on the world. It, it has gone badly a few times um, due to unexpected uh, situations, but uh, the most famous one is uh, the 1979 Skylab. When it re-entered the atmosphere, uh, due to uh, um, a, a misestimate of exactly how much drag it would experience due to the top of the atmosphere, uh, it actually ended up plunging uh, deeper into the atmosphere and farther along in its trajectory than they thought it was going to. And instead of crashing down into the ocean, it instead rained down debris over southwestern Australia. And now no one was hurt, and uh, apparently there was no property damage. Uh, but uh, that did raise concerns about this thing that, uh, going in, into the future. There, there have been a few uncontrolled entries as well, because some spacecraft just simply fail. Uh, they have no ability to communicate with the spacecraft at all, and they can track it as it goes around the planet, but eventually it's going to come down. Tiangong-1, the, the Chinese space station, was a good example from 2018. Um, they had lost control of it two years before then, and uh, they didn't know where it was going to come down. Now, in that case, coincidentally, it crashed almost exactly in the center of the the, the spacecraft cemetery, so it wasn't didn't end up being a problem. Uh, but there have been other incidences. Uh, in I believe 2017, there was a, a Antares rocket that burned up over Saskatchewan that was uh, quite made quite the show in the sky. But for the most part, uh, they they have this sort of down to a, a fairly careful science to dispose of the, these things safely. It's it's possible to leave objects in space for a long time. There have been objects up there for, for decades in some cases um, but the more things that we leave in orbit uh, the more dangerous it becomes in orbit uh, there have already been several incidences where the space station has had to uh, maneuver out of the way of incoming space debris where the astronauts all have to gather in one of the uh, one of the space capsules uh, either the space the dragon or the or the uh, Soyuz capsule for safety 
uh, just in case the station gets hit. Uh, the movie Gravity was a good example, uh, a little bit extreme as far as a disaster movie goes, but it does illustrate how much damage space debris can do uh, when it's traveling that fast around the planet. So we want to dispose of this somehow. And uh, in most cases, these objects are, are incapable of leaving Earth's orbit. So uh, the only place for it to go really is down. Uh, when these objects uh, enter the atmosphere, um, I mean, they're, they're designed in a very specific way so that when they do end their mission and they do re-enter the atmosphere and burn up, they almost completely burn away. Um, all of the, the plastics and fabrics and, and uh, less durable uh, materials that are used in the construction of these spacecraft and satellites um, are just incinerated. And what's left over are th uh, the more durable objects uh, or the more durable parts like uh, that are made of things like aluminum alloy, titanium, and so forth, that uh, these uh, are, uh, you know, are obviously the pieces that end up in the ocean, but they are also coincidentally the pieces that are the least reactive to nature. So when a, a piece of stainless steel ends up at the bottom of the ocean, it will rust and so forth, but it's no different than, say, a ship sinking or a, a, a cargo container dropping off of a cargo ship and titanium and, and aluminum alloy these things are fairly safe as far as uh being harmful to nature so there could be but it's, it's a very small amount based on all the other things that we're doing these days so the next thing that will probably end up in in the space uh graveyard is um probably the the, the progress 79 russian cargo module that's still attached to the space station so sometime in the next few months uh, I think it's about three months from now or four months from now, that will detach from the station and, and plunge down there. It's not designed to uh, survive re-entry. Um, but now the space station itself uh, will also end up there and NASA's current plan puts it uh, splashing down uh, sometime early in 2031. And depending on uh, the uh, solar activity in the years uh, going forward, uh, because that influences exactly how uh, puffy the, the top of Earth's atmosphere is, uh, they'll begin deorbiting uh, operations sometime between uh, 2026 and 2028 uh, to meet that, that January, February uh, 2031 uh, target date.